three extraordinary men who have fought their way out of adversity and through the amateur boxing ranks to achieve the elite title of Olympian. They now face their toughest journey to date as they transition to the professional boxing world. They pursue the ultimate dream of fame, success, money, and the right to be called a world champion. This guy's serious about boxing. I'm a boxer. This guy's gonna cause nightmares in the division. Every day I train hard. He's got the sword. <laughs> I take risks. Cody has got him going early here. From Hatton, the undefeated Lawrence. Oh, 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 Keep it tight. Leave me wanting more. Former Olympian Lawrence Okole is one of the rising stars of British boxing. At six foot five, he's one of the most powerful and explosive boxers in the cruiserweight division. He has recently turned pro with two wins by knockout under his belt. As an amateur, it's all work rate, finesse, all that kind of stuff. But as a professional, you know, knockdowns count more. So there's a lot more emphasis on power, aggression. So conditioning comes in. You've got smaller gloves, power comes in. So it turns into more of a fight than a boxing match. Hackney-born Lawrence is preparing for his third pro fight. I love boxing, and um, I do boxing for free at the end of the day. Um, I used to do it for free as an amateur, and now that I'm doing it on the biggest stage, the bottom line is I hate losing. I'm ready to make sacrifices that um, I never would have made. Everything you train for is enough, you'll win. If not, then you'll lose. Unlike most boxers, Lawrence made the 2016 Olympics with only a few years as an amateur. Getting to the Olympics was um, massive because it was my first time in a major tournament. So I'd never seen what it's like boxing against the very best in the world. But this one, you know, is going to be real competition because everyone's been training for four years to get to the Olympic Games. And this was just me after maybe seven months of being an, uh, um, a great Britain boxer going into the tournament. So I knew everyone would have the experience over me and everyone would sort of know my record was, I don't know, maybe 19 fights at the time and where people have had hundreds and hundreds of fights. So I knew that, that they would see that as an advantage. So there was a lot of pressure. So I'd go into every fight with the aim to win it. Lawrence is aiming to build on his two wins in his pro fights. His next fight is in Sheffield. I am confident that he's going to uh, succeed. So I have faith in him because I know, you know, everything he puts his mind on, he succeeds. This is what he wants to do, so I'm supporting him 100%. So I just like everything to do with boxing, really. Like, I'm more of a fan. Obviously, as much as I box, I'm more of a fan of it. He's a champion already, he knows. He's my world champion, aren't you? <laughs> On Saturday, hopefully, I'll do everything I've been doing in training. I've watched a bit of the guy, like, but he's got like a, um, you know, a star that I've sort of faced before, like numerous times. So it's, it's not anything new. It's not like he's doing anything new. So I'm just focusing on myself, really. Junior, have you got everything? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great big brother to me. She's hassling me for a bite now. It's like, when you, they see you on TV and suddenly they think you can just get them anything you want. Are you ready? Yeah. Because you are tough. <laughs> All the best, yeah? Your brother will look after you. As I always tell you, you know yourself. Bryn, yeah? And Keo, that's no less. Keo. Yeah? yeah? Use your brain. You're a smart fighter, mm -hmm. all right? And watch your defense and yes, everything, yeah? yeah. And um, calm, OK? Be calm. No rushing, okay. as you know. <laughs> Love you. Hey, 
Hey. <laughs> First time I met Lawrence was at Big Hair Gym. He came down the gym to try out, took him on the pads, and I just went through one routine with him. And through going through that routine, he said, I want you to train me. And that was it. That's how we, that's how we met and that's how we started off. And he had an air of confidence when I first started training him. He used to tell me what was going to happen, how it's going to happen. But there was just something about him, what he was saying, it was, it wasn't cockiness, it was just, he could see something. The more I took him on the pads, the more I understand what he could see. I had my coach, Brandon Shaughnessy, who for years, day in, day out, is training with me. Because there's been times where I haven't believed in myself or the whole world has told me this is how you're going to take this fight, and then he would give me a, a different approach. Lawrence uses every single attribute he's got to his advantage. At the moment, he's on an eight-fight contract for the first year. Even though we're halfway through that, he hasn't got past the first round. But when we get past a fighter that can take Lawrence to the first round, that's when we'll start looking a bit further down the line. But there's only so many cruiserweights in the division. So even though, even if he knocks out the next two in the first round, we're going to have to step him up. I take the pressure off of him by absorbing his life into mine, basically. Ouch. We're not about the short term. We want to develop Lawrence's career long term. So not even just, you know, through his fighting days, but also post-career. So it's about developing the persona, the personality, as well as his bank account. It'll be the first time that I'm scheduled to go six rounds. Um, will it go six rounds? We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, it's the first time I'm scheduled, but I've been training to do more like an eight rounder, so I shouldn't really have any sort of problems in terms of fitness. I'm confident in my fitness and my ability. At least I'd like you to go in there and try and like, box, do you know what I mean? Oh, box, but that's the problem. Care. When you box, that's when stoppages come. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, as much as I go in a little bit vicious, it's a good opportunity. It's a stadium. It is, isn't it? It's an opportunity to just show a little something. A big occasion fight in Sheffield in front of thousands is just what Lawrence needs to step up. Team McCauley finally make it to Bramall Lane. Uh, where are we supposed to go in for the thing? Hello, we have the press conference. It's just down our sweet out. Okay. But when you're starting out, getting inside the venue can be just as tricky as making it to the top of the card. Excuse me. It seems locked. I think it's locked. Welcome to Sheffield United Football Club here at Bramble Lane, ahead of a huge night of boxing on Saturday night, live and exclusive on Sky Sports Box Office and Showtime across America. This is the first of our two undercards today. Lawrence and Cody, you missed out at Wembley. You were a bit happy when you realised you got paid as well for that, but still, <laughs> it was uh, a disappointment. But a big stadium card here for you on Saturday and uh, ready to go. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. I've trained hard. I'm a brand new one my trainer and my strength coach, so I'm feeling strong, feeling fit. I've had good sparring with some heavyweights, so um, just getting used to um, taking punishment for six rounds and being able to give it out. Um, so I'm excited. Good. St stand the stuff, really. Once you've done it a few times, it's, it's kind of it's a bit repetitive, but it's, um, yeah, it's good. Lawrence is a good talker anyway, so it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. It's not a, he's very natural in front of camera, so it's fine. <laughs> Lawrence is due to fight respected cruiserweight Russell Henshaw, but there's no sign of him at the weigh-in. It's all a learning process. You know what I mean? It's not just the process of weighing in in front of crowds. It's also about what you're wearing, how you look, how you feel. Do I smile? Do I, do, I, do, I, do I look angry and menacing? Back in the hotel room, Lawrence has learned his opponent has dropped out. I find that after the press conference that the guy's meant to be boxing is injured or something's gone on with him. So I'm going to have to change my... Um, my they're, they're changing the opponent, so I think it's uh, meant to be a 2 and 0 two wins, two knockouts. Um, heavyweight, so he's going to be heavier than me. As an amateur, you never know who you're going to fight. Uh, at set tournaments, it could just be anyone. It's just a random draw. 
Same with when you go to shows, you got there, the person might not be the right weight. They might they might put out the day before, someone else might put in. So it's just boxing. A, a lot of times, this kind of thing does happen. So you just got to be mentally prepared to fight anyone, especially at this early stage. And there's some confusion about the fighter's name. We know his name, but we don't know how to, how to pronounce it, so I don't want to get it wrong. Rudolf Halesse. Rudolf Halesse. It's a P. It's a P. It's a N N Y N Y. Any boys to be blessed to be blessed. Yeah, support Lawrence. Um, been to one. Obviously, Lawrence is my brother, so I've been supporting them through from the amateurs when he was his first fight to the Olympics in Brazil to now and for as long as I can, I'm going to support him. Count out, ah, shot Lawrence. And again, and again. Ah, and it's over. Yeah, right. Well done, you got weighed yesterday, that's yeah. all cool. We're cool to just get you to jump on. It's more so. Oh, like when, when, when will I jump on though? When, uh, when you arrive, so like six. Oh. So, you, so you'll get here six thirty. Darren says. I get to see him. Yeah, of course, oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 well, yeah, or it's entirely up to no, you. I want to at least gauge how tall he is. Yeah. It's essential for boxers early in their careers to build a winning record, but finding the right opponent is key. For me, it's always been um, a case of having to fight out of my experience level or take risky fights early, because for one reason or another, people don't want to take the fight against me. You know, once Russell Henshaw pulled out, there was a list that they showed me of 41 different names of people that they asked to fight and for one reason or another 41 exes 41 reasons why they couldn't fight be it injury they've got another fight they don't want to fight me full stop that's why they've had to go far and wide all the way to the Czech Republic to find an undefeated fighter on the scales 15 stone even he also brings a perfect record two contests two wins both wins inside round number one a 2016 Rio Olympian from Hackney in London, Lawrence O'Coley. We know he's game, we know he's going to try something here. Halesic with a right hand from O'Coley, plays him out. In the first round, he'll do well together. Now I'll get smart. Now all the hard work. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I went in there and I got the job done around one again. So it's all good. Another experience that's the most people I think I've boxed, actually boxed in front of, and it was no big deal. Just took it in my stride and we're ready for the old two arena now. Three and oh, three KOs, you can't ask better than that. Yeah, it's good performance. Every exchange, there's a risk, like. Yeah. Every exchange, there's a risk, but, you know. Everyone that I fight, it's an opportunity to be like an Olympian on a big show. Because as far as boxers, what boxers want is to win titles and to box on big occasions um, and box against the best people. So right now, I'm looking good. Boxing me will put you on a big platform and also they'll get paid. So it's a, it's a win win, except for when they fight me. Um, but pe people are going to want my head, so I need to be in shape all the time and ready to go. Back with Duncan on Monday. What's up? Bank holiday Monday too. Yeah. <laughs> no days off, though, right? Tuesday, yeah. He's exceptionally hardworking and he's got a great mentality. He's very professional and that's, that, if you look at back at what he's accomplished in such a short time, that's pretty much down to him and his mentality and how serious he's taking boxing. In the boxing ring, he's very confident. Um, I think you have to be as a boxer. You can't go in the ring with any doubt. Um, but yeah, competitive is, is just, uh, just as you'd expect from a professional athlete. He wants to win and he wants to win at everything he does. But Lawrence wasn't always into boxing. As a child, he was overweight and was often drawn into street fights with other kids from his neighborhood. I was 
quite overweight and also um, I use my African name, which is Ikachuku, and um, obviously you know what kids are like. Cause, um, I had to do with a lot of name calling. That's when I started getting into my first fights. Lawrence's close friends are a big support to him, and they know his school days were not always easy. They brand themselves the Penny Boys. People didn't seem to take him that seriously in some ways. Like, there was obviously a lot of people who thought they were bad from our school, so gang members and stuff. And Lawrence was generally a nice guy. Like, everyone liked Lawrence, so people would think they could take advantage of him or whatever. But he could always fight. That's the thing. Even before boxing, like, he was knocking people down. So this was it's gonna be your your first fight. It's the fourth one now. Yeah, hopefully my fourth knockout as well. Keep the chaos coming, you know, people like that. He stood out, and in school, especially at that age, everyone wants to know who's the strongest kid in school. When you're that big, everyone just assumes, like, you're, you're probably one of the strongest. So in that way, he's obviously targeted by even sort of kids older, older et cetera, in the mm. higher years and whatever else. And so, yeah, there was a lot of uh, trouble, I'd say, surrounding him mm. in school and outside of school. I, I mean, I had front row seats to most of his fights at school. I'd say we all want the best for each other, that's another thing. Like, we've been friends with Lawrence from the time he was basically obese. So we're a collective, almost like a family, pushing each other towards our own individual goals. I strong. I am, I feel strong. But it's about looking good too. There's times I want to slack off, I want to um, have waffles or go out partying and drinking. But if I want to do all those things, it's going to be with them anyway. So if they see me trying to get a drink, you can't. You're a boxer, you're fighting. Those days when he's not really, you know, feeling it, or he needs a little bit of reassurance, he hasn't got to go far. Not only are we going to tell him, you know, yeah, Lawrence, you can do it, but we're going to smack his face and be like, you ain't got a choice, mate. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, we're doing our thing, you have to do your thing as well. After suffering knee problems, Lawrence was told by his GP to lose weight. And then she said, listen, you're clinically obese here. Like, you, you need to get you active. So I went and I tried different stuff. I went to the gym. And I remember, actually, one time, I went for a run with some of the people from my era. They all played football and so on. And there was a particular park that we ran around. You know, we all said, all right, we're going to do one or two laps of the park. Everyone was geared up. Yeah, cool. And we started. I got from one end to the other, so that's like a quarter of the park, and it was hell on earth for me just making it there, so I had to stop there, and everyone else carried on doing laps. One day, one of my friends just happened to come up to me like, oh, like, um, you should come down to, my, to the boxing gym. I went down with him one day, and then um, from the moment I walked into the gym, something just clicked and felt right. I remember hearing it, seeing it all, and just feeling the energy jumped on the scales, and they're like, don't worry, the weight's going to fall off you. And then, for some reason, I just believed him. At home, I'd always told my mum, I'm not having a fight, I'm just doing it for fitness, because every other day, I'm going to the boxing gym, and she's like, you better not fight, you better not fight. He came home, he said, oh, mum, do you know, um, the coach actually said I'm good. I'm like, yes, you know, whatever you apply yourself, I know you are able to do it. Yes, you are good. Then he said, oh, I'm going to think about becoming an amateur uh, boxer. Then I said, oh, what's that? I do know because um, Eubank Senior, he was my um, <laughs> my favorite boxer at the time. I'm Frank Bruno. So I said, hmm, what's that? And then he explained it. Then I did because with me, I love school. And I said, no. Um, tell me more about it. He said, oh, mom, it's just going to be a part-time thing, so I'm still going to carry on doing my studies. So I said, OK, let's see how that goes. You know, after the fight, he would come, he would come home and show it to me on the telephone. I'll still be screaming. He'll tell me, mom, I'm, I'm right beside you. Why are you screaming? <laughs> As Lawrence started spending more time fighting in the ring than out of it, his hobby soon began to develop into a passion. I remember I was working at McDonald's, and um, I came in at 5.01 AM, and my manager gave me stick for clocking in one minute late. 
and it just put a dampener on the whole day. Um, and I remember going on break late. But still, I managed to watch Usain Bolt win the 200m final and then Anthony Joshua win the Olympic gold medal in the last event. And I remember I was boxing two, three times a week. And after that, I was just like, you know what? Like, I can achieve what Joshua's achieved because you come from a similar background. And I started training full time and left McDonald's. He's only at the start of the journey now. He's got so much more to do and so much more work and effort to put in before he achieves what he wants to. So he can't get overexcited or carried away with anything yet. Um, and so, yeah, I would just, I would just try and remind him that as when appropriate and, and as much as possible. I would say more importantly than me keeping him grounded is the, the family unit that he's got around him. Uh, he's a good brother. The best. Yeah, the best brother, you know. Lawrence O'Coley, guys. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The one they call the sauce. The sauce. No, you can't. The sauce. It's his brother, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> and his mum and his little sister, who are the people that see him on a day to day basis, and they are the ones that have, you know, grown up with him and his mother's raised him with a certain set of values and how she wants him to behave. And he respects his mum more than he respects anybody else, more than me, more than his brother, anyone. He looks up to his mother. So really, he wants to make her proud. Actually, I think I'm one of the fortunate mother. My son was actually premature. It's like he kind of flew out of me. And the doctor said it was going to be a very, very tall child. I was quite um, strict with um, him and his brother because um, we live in Hackney and I wanted them to turn out good. Yeah, my mum loves to be involved in cooking, etc. And now she's tried to tailor it. Um, I still enjoy a good fried plantain. Some people call it plantain, but I don't. Um, so yeah, it's just good. So since it's, it's good, fun, happy food on a Sunday. Other people have like Sunday roasts, but this is more my kind of thing now. He's a vegan now, and uh, yeah, we're just you know we're kind of going with the flow. I love cooking, so I love um, experimenting as well. So. You know, let me take another cheeky little one, yeah? Don't tell nobody, no. all right? Because I want him to eat, and I want him to eat well, because I don't want him to go outside and, you know, pick on bread or on things that are not, you know, good for him. And I will text him, I will tell him, look, I've made this, you know, excitement, I've made this food, his heart is waiting for you, with a can of malt, and he'll say, oh, mom, I'm definitely coming home <laughs> after my practice, so it's been fun. He came home, mom, oh, I, you know, I met, um, I met um, this Nigerian guy, his name is Anthony, and that, you know, I went online to, you know, to look him up, and then I said, okay. And each time, oh, mom, Anthony introduced me to this person, he's done this for me. Honestly, oh, I cannot sing, I cannot sing Anthony Joshua um, praise enough. He's a wonderful, wonderful child. Yeah, yeah, no. I know it's a dangerous, dangerous game, so I'm not stupid to that. Yes, I do know. But at the end of the day, that's what he wants to do. I'm not going to tell him, don't do it. Mum, get the cans in my jar. <laughs> you can be my champion. For a popular boxing podcast channel to promote his upcoming fight. My pro career has obviously it's been a perfect start. I've had three fights, three wins, three KOs. I boxed on world championship bills, stadium fights, arena fights. So I've been exposed to big crowds and big occasions very early on in my career. When I get myself to the you know level where I'm boxing for titles, I've already experienced the big crowd. I've already experienced the pressure of crowds. Yeah. And then I just have to deal with the pressure of beating higher level opposition. Lawrence and Anthony are their old friends, and he's somewhat mentored him. So when he was turning pro, um, we were looking to expand the company, take on as much uh, of the right talent that we wanted to, people that Anthony, the team, um, and his coaches had singled out as people that could potentially 
operate at world level yeah. um, and become in, you know, get themselves in that bracket of an elite fighter. Mm. I had approaches from other management companies, all good within their own um, own way, but I felt like um, with AJ and boxing management, the advice they've given me was clear, concise, and um, it, it didn't feel like there's any strings attached to it. So as I got to meet them more and know them more, um, especially with my connection with Joshua, um, as soon as they said that, you know, they, they would be interested in representing me, it just felt natural and just went from there. We want to work with the best and we feel like what we've done with Anthony uh, and the opportunities we've presented him and the way that we've helped his career grow, we can do for a lot of other people who fall under that bracket. And mm -hmm. Lawrence was definitely, most definitely one um, of those characters. So it really seemed like a, seemed like a natural, natural progression for us to start working together. He's with the right management team. Uh, he's got his family structure around him to advise him. And, I mean, he's not stupid, he can see. He can see what's happening around him. And he knows this is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so he's got to make the best of it. As a professional boxer, there's just as much pressure to build a brand as there is to knocking down opponents. When you turn professional, it's your name. So you become your own brand. Like, it doesn't matter what country you're from, it's just you. So that comes with a different type of pressure where it's not the Great Britain culture, is, it's not, you know, anything like that. It's not get a medal for the country. It's more about, you know, Lawrence O'Coley. Um, can he get a knockout? Can he win? How far can he go? Social media guru. <laughs> We want to portray as natural image as possible. We want him and you know, people to see the real him. So um, I'll discuss with him what he feels comfortable doing, what he feels is natural to him, uh, and what doesn't feel natural to him. If it's not something that he's particularly concerned about or he doesn't feel he'd be in his natural environment in, then, then we won't really entertain it. But the management side of it, I don't really get involved in because they've got their strategic plan. If you look at the plan they use with Anthony, I mean, you can't fault it. I heard about him in the ABAs. I'd be, you know, training, and then they'll be like, oh, gee, have you heard about this, like, big heavyweight from um, Finchley who's just knocking everybody out? And, like, and one of the coaches came to the club one time and said, oh, it would be good for you to spar him. Like, this is, and he's, um, he said, oh, when he's punching my, um, the pads, my elbows, I can't take it. So I remember thinking to myself, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to spar that guy. He was the, one of the people that Lawrence saw on TV that he thought to himself, I can do this. They trained together. They spar with each other. We spar all sorts, really. He spars heavier ones to keep him alert, and he spars lighter ones um, for the speed and the sharpness. Uh, the lighter ones are just as important as the heavier ones. The same things I used to put myself through, I now put my fighters through. At our gym, everybody knows everybody and there's no egos. So Lawrence is the top of the tree, but Lawrence will be working with the juniors that just started. And the juniors that just started might not even know who Lawrence is, but other people in the gym know. And so that gets them more relaxed, because they can think, well, they can train with him, I can train with him. If he can be that good, I can be that good. He's aware of where he's come from and where he wants to go to. He's very grounded, so he's not going to be moving out of the borough. Where he grew up is important to him, because he knew the struggle that he had to, he had to get where he is. Growing up in Hackney, Lawrence still feels close to his roots. He's paying a visit to a local boxing academy, where his brother Henry works as a tutor. It's a school which uses boxing as a way of helping young children. These kids are a similar age to 
when Lawrence started boxing. I can see firsthand what boxing can do to help the young people here. A few of the young ones, they ended up loving it, asking, oh, yeah, could, can we do this after school, etc.?" trying to get advice or go to other amateur clubs. Whatever he does, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing, yeah? Once I found out about the school, the ethos of the school, I just needed to be involved because I saw firsthand what Botson done for my brother and where that took him. And then I said, I definitely need to be involved in that. It gives kids like a second chance who have lost their place in mainstream school. But boxing, you see it firsthand improve their confidence as they, the way they carry themselves, their discipline. And so that works hand in hand with how they take on people in life. <laughs> Whilst at the academy, Lawrence catches up with Lloyd, who was the first person to spot his boxing potential. Well, both of us grew up in Hackney. Um, I'm the eldest of nine. Jeremy Lawrence has got uh, how many of you there? Three now. There's three. three yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and so our family was notorious for their music. That's it. That's it. Fast up. I was so onto boxing, but there was only, like at Lions, there was only two or three days a week where they were actually open. Yeah. So you opened up more days for me to get in more work to progress a lot faster. I've always remembered it. Until now, like when I see you about and mm hanging -hmm. and stuff, you know I mean, I always remember um, those sessions, like yeah. definitely. Just yeah, getting a work. And I remember it was even in your session is the first time I realised I had six packs. No, no, man, too hot. Harder than that. That's one too hot. When you came to me, everybody said he's a big kid, but it came to me he was tall. Mm -hmm. I saw like I'm like he tall, rangy, and I'm like okay, and I think he was on the he was on the change, so it wasn't that he was the kid. He wasn't doing anything mm -hmm. no more. He's more the kid, okay, right, I'm trying to take control of this and sweat it out and use boxing as a way. Do you know what I mean? So I saw it as like, okay, cool, there's properties and there's attributes here. Yeah. Let's use those attributes to see yeah. what we've got. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was always about, you know, saying to Lawrence, use your, you know, use, use your height, use your reach. The first thing that we was always talking about is, you know, adjust that jab, make sure that jab keeps him on ending that jab. And we see now he's using it and putting guys to sleep. I think I was getting over the sort of fighting, especially when I'd started boxing um, and people knew that I was boxing. Mm. It was less likely people wanted to um, have fights with me. And also, I think um, it was getting to that age where you couldn't just have a street fight and that'd be the end of it. It was two different sides. Yeah. So you had the, you know, entertainment, sports, yep. it's sat inside, so, yeah. you know, the musicians, like, yeah. your family was heavily yeah. involved in. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's also the other side, where it was, you know, gang violence very yeah. close by, people coming outside the school, cool. yeah. and it had that sort of tension in yeah. the area. To get to where I've got to, it's just finding that safe haven, which is the gym, yeah. to, do the, to do my session. So even if there's something going on after school, cool. yeah. I'm not there. No. I'm yeah. in the gym, gym do you yeah. know what I mean? Working on... Um, on all that stuff, and that's carried on now. Amidst all of that, people like yourself, do you know what I mean? Like my brother Tim, um, Professor Green, all these guys, Shez, do you know what I mean? All these guys, in the midst of all that stuff in Hackney, I've done well and are still doing well. And now I'm nationally recognised and appreciated by the whole country, do you know what I mean, coming out of Hackney. You know, there's a lot of potential in this borough, a lot of potential, do you know what I mean? Lawrence's visit has helped motivate the children and serves as a reminder of where he's come from. To the ring. He loves it. He loves to walk, but then he's got to be focused as well. 
So it's, it's enjoying the moment, but you've got to be focused. I believe he is one of the, he's already one of the strongest cruiserweights in the country. He's got three amateur fights behind him, and he's got this pedigree of coming from the Rio Olympics, so people know that he's a fantastic fighter. Lawrence is hoping his next fight at the O2 will last more than one round. This is his learning period. So he's learning how to deal with 12 rounds of fighting. So if you're knocking everyone out in the first round, you haven't been around four, you haven't been around six, you haven't been around eight, you haven't been around 10. He doesn't know what it feels like to be in a championship. And unless you actually experience it, you, you won't be aware of the things that can and cannot happen. If it's in front of him to stop someone, he's going to stop him, because that's his job, you know? It's just about going and then doing what I do. If they can't handle the power, then they can't. At the end of the day, I've been pro for three months, had my professional debut in March. So um, you don't expect world champions, but at the same time, the people that are in front of me are getting taken out in very, very impressive fashion. Lawrence's performances have been eye-catching, but if anyone knows how he's really feeling before the fight, it will be his brother, Henry. From what I know of my brother, when he's on corner, I look at him, and I just know what's going through his mind. Savagery and source, because I know what he puts himself through in training. I know when he comes home, and he's just, like, nearly in tears from how hard he's working and how he feels what, what his strength and conditioning coach are putting through, what his boxing coach is putting through. And then so when it comes to fight time, he's angry at his opponent because he had to go through all of that just to beat them. He's not oblivious to the fact that everyone wants what he has and there's so many people out there waiting for him to slip up. I try and be there for him as much as possible because just to let him know that he's not alone because at the end of the day, he is going to be the one in the ring delivering and taking the punches. When you actually look back at the journey, it's, it's just sometimes it's just crazy. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's actually crazy. And it's, it's, definitely a, um, it's definitely a proud moment and one that everyone's happy that's happening. Back in the hotel room, Lawrence is relaxing the night before the fight. He's giving out tickets to one of his fans in the competition on social media. It's my first time boxing at O2. I'll do something different. And obviously, like, OK, okay well, you've won. He's only got two photos. No, you haven't won. He was winning. Adam, 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 good work. Secrets to success, hide and sweets. Mm -hmm. well, I'm gonna eat some cake while we're in the middle of this, if that's okay with you. Is that okay with you? Mm. Mm. My first way in, oh, I was nervous. You know, I see my guy, I was pumped. Mm. Second one, a little, little, little less nervous, a little less pumped. And now it's just like, there's my guy, you're gonna fight him tomorrow. I could be nervous or no, it's not gonna change the fact I have to fight him tomorrow. So it's just, it's just taking my stride. I've been exposed to big fight cards and, you know, big fight drama. And as much as I'm not the main event, there's um, expectation in me. Um, Cause you're putting a limelight and you're being pushed. People are expecting more from you. So, you know, I just have to deal with that, but it's normal. So this is a gum shield. Hopefully um, it won't get seen. It'll stay in my mouth firmly. But you know, I've got the Nigerian flag. Obviously, I'm a Nigerian, my parents are Nigerian. My surname, Okoli. And any boxer that has Kale in their name has to have it highlighted. It's just it's, it's a crime not to. So oh, Kale highlighted in red. And then of course the British flag. I was a Great Britain Olympian. I live in Great Britain my whole life, so you know, you got to um, pay homage. So it's, a, it's a quite a personalised gum shield. I've got two more coming. Um, I let them be a surprise when they come. Mm -hmm. We've got a fight label, the plug. Got the boxing socks, you know. The big pots. Should I show you what I'll call side? And then, uh... 
it's like my superhero costume, you know? When you put it on, uh, it's time, it's showtime, there's no hiding place. It's time to be, to be a man or not. And I always choose to be uh, the man. There's only one thing you can't train a boxer for, and that is before the fight. All you can do is prepare them for it. One of the key things to do that is to keep him relaxed. Then everything else should fall into place. Hey, get my stat chair ready. <laughs> hey, hey, get my stat chair ready. Get my, get my stat chair ready. Akoli's <laughs> out the cage. Are you okay, champ? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. What's up, boy? You crap? You all right? What's going on, G? Good, G. How are you? So I don't feel fear, I don't feel anger. I'm just looking over, waiting for the ball to go so I can just do do boxing basically, you know. The only time that I'm really nervous is that wait while like you're about to walk to the ring. There's no turning back now. You know, different thoughts like that go through your head. And then as soon as they say walk, all of that goes away in me. It's just like, I'm about to walk. I've chosen to be here. I want to be here. I love this. And sometimes before I was, I'd send the fighter out and I think to myself, I should have told him this, I should have told him that. But you've got to rely on the fighter to think for themselves. So as long as you can snap them into certain things, just to stay and relax, it will just click. So with Lawrence, I can tell him a couple of words. That's what I take into the first 20 seconds. So he might say, I right, go for the body early. Then that's what I'm thinking about. That's the last thought I have. Or he might say, you know, do a particular thing. And that's what I focus on in the first, you know, 10, 20 seconds. But Lawrence hasn't really shown what he can do yet because he hasn't gone past the first round. So everybody thinks he's this out-and-out -out brawler, where he's not. Lawrence is a quality fighter. And then I just think about all the training I've done, all the sit-ups, the runs, all the times I punched the bag, all the times, you know, Brian is, you know, taking me to dark places, the times my sparring partners are taking me there. I think, I can't go through all of that and then lose here. It'll be not only bad for me, but just bad for everyone involved in me because there's a lot of energy and emotion put into me, and uh, I want to deliver with results. Boxing is not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing. It's a mix of emotions when you put on the gloves. I feel dangerous, but then vulnerable at the same time. Because I know my opponent's putting on gloves and he's trained and he's got the same type of gloves I've got on. And I know that I'm about to go and have a fight. So it's a mixture of the two. That's why I push to be more dangerous than I am vulnerable. You know, I work on my defense all the time and I walk on my offense. Because I know that when you hit someone too hard for them to get back up, they can't get up and hurt you. So, you know, sometimes you've got to use that fear factor to be more dangerous yourself. And Lawrence O'Coley gets the fourth win of his career and once again in that first round. Well, Anthony Joshua has said that O'Coley doesn't need any advice. He didn't need to tell him anything in the dressing room and I'd make him right on that show. The sauce, the sauce, the sauce, the sauce, the sauce. How are looking? I haven't even seen it. Boom, boom, boom. They're going to show it. Hey, beautiful. He did not last. 
Those body shots are still good. They don't really, I was going to, oh, mate. All right, Lawrence. Cool, well. That's how you handle it. Or you could have done six rounds with him. Yeah. Had a point taken off. Yeah, I could have had a lap in the front of him. Or I could just knock him out. It's the sauce. That's why they call him the sauce. You know what you saw there was just too much sauce. Savagery, power, confidence, all of that, and more. Are you still sparring with him? Yeah, well, not right this minute, but yeah, we'll definitely be sparring in the future when we're training for a fight. But you see, what I like about him is just like that the old man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's gold. That's gold. I just... threw my dinner up to him. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible to watch. Anyway, yeah. well done, Frank. Thank you. And still, yeah. but, don't, but don't have this in your head about one round. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, try, I try my best, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Way too fast, no Ramadan. Wrap him up quick, no Lamajan. It go left hand, right hand, uppercut. He too soft, flat, but I'm on a journey of self discovery as, as much as um, everyone else is watching my discovery. I don't know, I don't know if I can do 12 rounds. I don't know if I'll ever be fit enough to do 12 rounds. But at the same time, I'm ready to find out. So I was ready to take the plunge straight away. And um, I've been enjoying it so far, but I know that. The journey's only going to get a lot more rocky, a lot more difficult. There's a lot of hard nights to come, but um, that sort of excites me, and that's what really drives me. 